Women. With a resounding applause, please help us make welcome Dr. Vivian Okoye. Put our hands together and receive with a house and rock welcome, Dr. Vivian Okoye. Let's put our hands together for her she comes. Oh, come and make her feel very warmly welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you. We can have our seat. Thank you. Thank you, House on the Rock. Thank you to the leadership and membership of um, House on the Rock. Thank you for having me. It's a privilege to stand here um, this morning to have this conversation on parenting. We cannot overemphasize the need to raise the next generation. And amazing work by the multimedia team. Um, if we can only even go with the lessons learned from those grandparents, the two grandparents that spoke to us, if we can harness the lessons that came out from that, you know, we can do something with it. But we're here, we're celebrating our children, it's Children's Day, and we want to have a conversation on parenting. A lot has been said, a lot has been done. I'm sure that we are all amazing parents, but like Pastor said, there's room for improvement we all can improve and if you're here you're not yet a parent then you're very very lucky because these conversations can shape how you do things from now or how you do things when you start your own family my name is dr vivian okoye as you have seen and i've been tasked with the assignment of having a conversation with us on how to raise children a gr growing a generation of his power growing a generation of his power there's a scripture that has been mentioned over and over here this morning and that is raise up a child in a way that he should go and when they are old they will not depart from it right that's a very popular scripture and you begin to ask yourself what is the way that a child should grow because we have different ideologies we have different perspectives so when you say raise up a child in a way that he should go, what is the way that a child should go? What it means is simply that there is a purpose for each individual. There is a purpose for each child. There is a purpose for the children in your home that have come through you. If you have three children, three of them cannot be the same. Three of them have different assignments. They are carrying different solutions for their world and um, when we talk about success in parenting when we talk about you know at the end of the day when you have raised your children and you're looking back and you're asking yourself have I done a good job have I been successful in raising my children you know I tell parents that it is not measured by the good clothes by the toys by the schools by the degrees Success in parenting is measured by how aligned you have been able to help your child to be to their purpose, to their unique purpose. Success in parenting is measured by how you're able to help your child align to their unique purpose. So our focus when it comes to parenting is constantly asking ourselves, am I aligning my child to become who God made them to become. And when we talk about purpose, people think it's one big thing, it's a destination. In simple terms, I like to define purpose as being, doing, and having all that God wants you to. So that at every point in time you are being, you are doing, and you're having what God wants you to have. And this is purpose because Purpose is not a destination, it is a continuous journey. At every point in time, I'm doing what God wants me to do and being who God wants me to be. And this is what we need to help our children to achieve. We say we achieve success in parenting. And when we start this journey of parenting, what it does is that it points back to you as a parent. Because if you're going to raise a child who is being and doing what God wants them to be, then you have to become somebody who is being and doing what God wants you to be. Because you are the primary model for your child right so and in this journey of becoming for your child to become who god wants them to be to be aligned to purpose and to fulfill purpose you are pivotal 
The parent is the primary pivot to launching their children into purpose. Other institutions have a role to play. The schools, the church, like we are in church now, we have our children in church. They are giving them um, knowledge and education about God and teaching them some skills as well. But primarily, the parent is the primary influencer of the child. Ideally, the parent should be the primary influencer of the child. So the journey of parenting with you and for you and your child is the journey of discovering the child in front of you, understanding that child's purpose and constantly aligning them to that purpose. Parenting is not about you. Parenting is not about raising a mini-me. Parenting is not about using your child to fulfill your unfulfilled dreams. Parenting is not about you. Parenting is not about raising a mini-me. Parenting is not about using your child to fulfill your unfulfilled dreams. So we have some parents who probably wanted to be doctors or lawyers and they couldn't achieve that. And even before their children come, they've already marked it in their calendar. My first son is going to be a doctor. My second son is going to be a lawyer. Parenting is about understanding why God sent that child to you because that child is a carrier of a solution instilled in them, inbuilt in them are unique solutions, unique purposes. And you are supposed to nurture and harness those things and align them to it by the time they are leaving your home. Before your child leaves your home, which is at 18, right? Because by the time they get into secondary school, if they are in boarding school, they are already leaving your home. You only get to spend three weeks, four weeks during the holiday. And they get to university and from there they are not coming back. They start their own life. So by the time your child is leaving your home, they should have a sense of what they are here to do. They should know where their life is headed. They should know the direction that their life is headed, right? If you look at, if you, look at you know, our, our manual is the word of God. Regardless of, you know, our profession, whatever profession you are in, I'm a child psychologist, you can make a, the, the foundation is the word of God at the end of the day. If you look at how um, the plan God has for parenting, you see that there is a pattern. You see that there is a way. God never makes mistakes. He's organized, right? When you look at um, the few people that, you know, God came to when he wanted to give them a child. For instance, um, Judges chapter 13, when Samson was going to be bettered, right? God appeared to the wife of Manoah and he said, you're going to have a child. And his, the angel appeared to the, the woman and said, you're going to have a child. And he stated a need because the Israelites were being oppressed by the Philistines. This is the need. And this is the solution. This child is going to come to release Israel. That is his purpose. And after stating the, the, the purpose of the child, the angel went ahead to say, this is how you are going to raise this child for the sake of his purpose. So your child comes with a personality, right? You have a child who is, quote and unquote, stubborn. And it's, it, it's worrying you. And you think you need to change that child. No. Every child comes with a personality based on what God has planned for them in future. Do you understand? So that child that is stubborn might have a leadership role in his future. And if you break him by the way you are parenting him today, you have set him up to struggle for the things that God has put in his life in the future. So your duty is not to change your child. Your duty is to understand your child and to understand how to show up for that particular child. The child who is very strong-willed, who always wants to question you, who gives you headache, needs you to sit down and say, this is the child that I have. This quality might be difficult to me, but this quality is going to serve a purpose. How do we walk through this? Even the child whom you think that the child is easygoing, they are simple, anytime I tell them to do something, they do what I tell them to do. That child also needs you in a different way. Because if your child is very pleasing, they are going to be easily influenced. 
So for that child, you show up to teach them how to assert themselves, how to have boundaries, how to say no when, when things are not right. So for each child, you show up to them in a different way. And you can't do it when you have a pre, predetermined idea of what parenting is about. You show up to parenting for the child to lead you, so to say, because it is the child that you are parenting. You're not coming with a preconceived idea. Your journey is to walk with God, to understand the child in front of you, to unravel them and to show up for them, to support them, to nurture them, to guide them because they've, they've been placed in your life. You have a superior knowledge, you have a superior intelligence and you are now supposed to lead them based on what God is telling you. You know the truth of the matter, God is speaking to us about our children per time, but we're too busy to see it. Our, our own conditioning is covering our eyes that we don't see it, or the societal's idea of what is ideal is making us perceive our children in, it, in, in one way or the other. But the truth is that every behavior is feedback. Everything your child is expressing is feedback. And it's for you to go back, reflect, and know how to use it to serve the purpose with an understanding that my job here is to align this child to purpose. Do you understand? Are we together? When Jesus was going to be born, an angel appeared to Mary, the same pattern. He's going to do this and this and this. He's going to save the world. This is his purpose. And see, if you don't parent from a place or an idea of what your child is carrying inside, you're going to show up to them. You're going to overreact to a lot of things, and you're going to show up to them in a way that doesn't serve you and doesn't empower them. In Luke chapter 2, the Bible tells us that, you know, Joseph and Mary went to Jesus from Nazareth to Jerusalem for Passover, right? And after they had finished the celebration, they left the temple, but Jesus stayed back. And they traveled for almost a day, or a day if not more, before they realized that Jesus wasn't with them. They came back, they looked for him everywhere, they came back into the temple, they saw him talking to professors and all of that. If we were to complete this story as a regular African parent, how do you think this story will end? <laughs> I mean, you went somewhere with your child. You entered your car. The child did not follow you. You traveled for a whole day. You did not see the child. You came back. You saw him in the temple, gisting. Jesus would have collected basbos. But because Mary understood, I cannot make a scene because he is doing something that has already been told to me. I might be angry, but there is a greater purpose, and I cannot afford to destroy his confidence for that thing that he is doing. So when you understand who your child is, the things that they are carrying, some words will not come out of your mouth. You can't, you know, for instance, when you have paid attention to your child and you know that this child loves to speak, this child is expressive, You'll not be saying things like, shut up, keep quiet, sit down, don't speak when elders are speaking. Yes, you might want to teach them how to express themselves, but you will not be derogatory. Your purpose now will now be to help them know when to express, when not to express, how to express, how not to express, but not to make them feel that how, how they are expressing or their ability to express is a bad thing. A lot of us are struggling with our expression today because of all the shut-ups we ate as children. A lot of us have, are struggling with self-esteem issues today because of all the insults we ate as children. And it is foolishness to see something that didn't serve you and then you're repeating that thing on your children.
we are so much in need of being in control that we don't realize how much that need of being controlled are destroying the lives of our children. Beyond understanding that your child's purpose, you know, is connected, beyond understanding that your child is built for purpose, right? And showing up with that awareness to the parenting relationship. There are other things. That's the spiritual side of it, where you are communicating and working together with the giver of the child. Remember, the child is not yours, so you're just the custodian, right? And you have to communicate and work to the, together with the giver of the child to understand the blueprint of this child's life so that you then show up to help the child navigate through the life. But in this journey, in the realities, everyday realities, everyday communication, there are two things that are important. If you want to grow a generation of his power, remember the conversation is that we want to grow a generation of his power. And the truth of the matter is that you cannot access and express God's power if you're not in his will. So that, you know, we have to understand that. So your child has to be in God's will for them to be able to access and express his power, right? So I said there are two things in, that are important if you want to help your child navigate through life in reality every day as a parent. Number one is that, you know, your ability to do this is dependent on number one, how well you know your child, how well you know your child, right? And the second thing is that it's dependent on how much capacity you have to get them to do what they ought to do. That's influence. How well you know your child and how much capacity you have to get them to do the things that they ought to do. Influence. It was influence that made Mary to be able to launch Jesus into public ministry. Jesus wasn't ready to change water into wine. Remember that. He said, I'm not ready, woman. She didn't shout. She just said, you people should carry the, you people should wait, he will give you instruction. That's influence. Influence is not control. You don't have to do gara gara for influence. If you're shouting, if you're always shouting to get your child to get, to get things done, then you don't have influence on them. Do you understand? That shows your level of influence. If you have to fight to get your child to do something, then you don't have influence on them, you know. So what does it mean to know your child? It means that you know who this child is, you know how to communicate to them, you know their temperament, you know how they want to be loved, you know how to show up for them. What does it mean to influence your child? Like I have said, it means that you don't have to manipulate them, right? If you have to manipulate them, if you have to shout to get them to do things, then, you know, you don't have influence on them. Influence means that you are the primary and loudest voice in your child's head. When your child is at the crossroad of making a critical decision, is it your voice that they will hear? Is it your voice or the voice of their peers? Right? Is it your voice or the voice of, your, of their peers? Influence is that your child comes with a crazy idea to you and you're able to sit with them and help them see clearly that this is a bad idea. I think you should choose this one. I believe you should choose this one. And you don't have to fight about it. But the question is, how many of us can say that we, that when our kids are at the crossroad of their life, that they will come to us? We're not trying to raise robots. We're not trying to raise perfect children. Children will be children, they will make poor choices, or they will be at the verge of making poor choices at one point or the other. But when your child finds out that, that they have made a poor choice, can they come back to you trusting that you'll be their guide, and you'll be their, as in that, they, can they trust your decision, can they trust your counsel? Do you understand? Yesterday I was with a group of about 50 teenagers, 11 to 15 years of age, and we were talking about sex. And these children had crazy in-depth knowledge about sex, crazy in-depth questions about sex, but they cannot ask their parents. And I'm asking, who are you talking to about these things? There's always that bad boy in school or that bad girl in school who seems to know better than their age mates. 
But the problem is that this bad boy and this bad girl might have been unduly exposed or too exposed, and you can't trust what they're telling your kids. So why do you want your child to, you know, go talk to those people? Why are you, why are you, why are you not creating conversations in your home that will bring these questions up? An example is something goes viral, and we're on our phones, we're condemning, we're judging. But most times, I say it's a call to action that your own is not on the internet doesn't mean that it cannot happen to you. So when we see these things, it should bring up conversations on our dining tables, if you have teenagers. We had a recent um, 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 incident that went viral. How many of us went home to ask our children, this is what is going on? Have you heard about this? What do you think should have do this girl should have done? What do you think she did differently? Are you seeing the consequences of her actions? Well, most of us bury our head in the sand and we act like our children, God forbid, God forbid is not a parenting strategy. Do you understand? It's not my portion. It's not anybody's portion. You have to do the work. You have to have the conversations that you need to have to get things done and to get, you know, get your children knowing, get into their head, understand what is going on so that you can help them and direct them. If you don't know the conversations they're having with their parents, if you don't know what they know, then you cannot help them. These children are yearning to have conversations. They have questions, but they don't know. You know, I asked one and she said, my mom will not understand. So are you that parents who, how does your child perceive you? How, do they think that you understand them? Do they think that they can boldly come to you with their problems, no matter how foolish, no matter how bad? You have to be that kind of parents and that's the only way you can be able to influence your child. Thank you. Sorry about that. So for you to be able to be a parent that can influence your child, you must have a track record of giving sound counsel. Sound and truthful counsel. Do you understand? So you know this thing we say, you know, sex education, and you're telling your child, when you touch a boy, or when a boy touches you, you get pregnant. That's the sex education most of us got, right? When a boy touches you, you know now, you, you're seeing your period, if, if you touch a boy now, you just get pregnant. It cannot work in the 21st century. It might, have, it might have worked for us because we didn't have any way of checking the information. Now your child has an access to a phone and he, she types, how do people get pregnant? Or she types, if I touch a boy, will I get pregnant? And, you know, Google will provide them with the information, but they may not come back to you to say, Mommy, what you said is wrong. Bro. They'll just be looking at you. Mommy is clueless. <laughs> do you understand? And then they'll now go to Sarah in school. Sarah, how do people get pregnant? Sarah gives them a detailed information. And what Sarah tells them matches what they saw on the internet. Then they start to trust Sarah with their sex questions more than Mommy and Daddy because Mommy is giving me wrong information. And there's something called the law of first mention, right? Wherever you get an information first becomes your primary source of that information. So that's why conversations like sex, don't shy away from it. Have those conversations so that when they go out and hear other things from other people, they can come back to you to verify because you were the primary source of information. We cannot overemphasize the, the need for you to know your child and for you to be able to influence your child because that is what you need to help them navigate. That is what you need to help direct them because you are their compass until they are able to direct themselves. So you must know them and you must build capacity to influence them. As I speak, a lot of us assume that we know our children, but the question is how much, what relationship do you have with them? How much do you know their struggles and their challenges? How much do you know how they prefer to be spoken to, how they prefer to be loved? 
How much do you know the type of discipline? Because discipline is also important. But the problem is how much do you know the type of discipline that works for the personality of the child in front of you? There's a child that you shout out, shout at now, the next minute they are playing, they forget about it. There's a child that you shout at for two weeks, they've not recovered from the words you said to them. So how much do you know how to relate to each child? We think we have influence on our kids, but how much can you direct your child without being forceful? How much do they trust and, and, and trust, how much do they trust your counsel that you can counsel them and that your counsel is truth and real? So most times we tell lies just to get our children to do things. You must give truthful, factual counsel. Your emotional outburst is not counsel. Speaking in the heat of emotion is not counsel. Make sure that you have your facts and your figures. The moment you sell an idea to a child and they buy it, you're done. So most times why we struggle is that we, we don't convince them. But just having emotional outbursts. I've told you not to do this thing. I've told you, I've told you you're still doing it. Why should they not do that thing? Immediately the child understands that your job is done. And immediately they understand that it's for their own benefit. Your job is done. I always say that parenting is about marketing your values to your child until they buy it. Parenting is about marketing your values, you know, to your child. The way you market your products to people until you convince them to buy. Parenting is about marketing your values to your child until they buy into it and become ambassadors of your values. How much are they willing to come to you with their difficult questions? I had a conversation with a girl who was having a personality crisis and you know we worked together for some months and when we got talking about her faith um she said oh i no longer go to church um i'm really not into the christian thing again and i'm like what happened she she told me that um, she's about 18 years she told me that she had a friend who is gay right this is in nigeria i'm not talking about outside the country so she she had a best friend who became gay and you know, she tried to convince the girl about God's perspective of sexuality and all of that, but the girl also tried to convince her. So somehow, because they are best friends, she stopped talking about God. She wanted to make the girl comfortable because she was a people pleaser. So she wanted to make the girls comfortable. And, you know, I want my best friend. I don't want to talk about God. I don't want to talk about church because it offends her. And that was how she started to sleep away. And I'm like, did you talk to your mom about it? She said, no. Why? My mom will not understand. So the thing is, you must know your child. You must know those that have access to them. Parenting is like you being the head of the train. Like you are the head of the train. And there are other coaches. There will be teachers. There will be coaches. There will be friends. You know them and you lead them. You weed out those that are supposed to be uh, weeded out. I don't know if that's the correct English. And then you keep those that will support your child to become what God has called them to be. If we were to categorize all parents in the world based on how much we know our children and how much we can influence them, we'll have four categories of parents, right? And I'll run through them quickly because of time. The first category of parents are those who have no clue of their children, of who their children are, and have little or no influence, you know, on them, right? So you don't know who your child is, and you can't even get your child to do things you want them to do. And it's not our fault for some of us, right? Some of us are so busy, the challenges of real life, you know, we are invested in some other things. But the risk is that you will raise a child who is lost. Who, you will raise a child who doesn't know who they are, who doesn't know their purpose, and at the end of the day, if you raise a child who cannot be aligned to purpose, you wouldn't have done parenting well as God will have you. So we need to prioritize parenting and we need to start investing in, you know, knowledge 
to be able to help the children and to be able to help them navigate. The second category are those who do not care about relationship with their children, but they have high influence and control over their children. This is the, the average African parent, right? I'm not interested. What am I discussing with the child? I know a man who told me, why should I explain myself to my child? Why should I explain myself to a child that I gave birth to? But this man has, you know, he, he can make his child do something because he's using force. And it works. Yelling works. Hitting works. It works because it's to make your child do what you want them to do. But there is a risk. At the end of the day, you will raise a child who doesn't have a relationship with you and who is waiting to leave your home so that they can do what they want to do. So they, it works temporarily, but the moment your child gains freedom from you, they will go and do the things that you have stopped them from doing all those why. So you also do not want to be that parent. Relationship is important. Then we have another group of parents. They are friends. They are very liberal. You know, they, want, they know their children. They want to be their children's friends, but they don't have boundaries. Remember I said discipline is important. For the one you love, you, you must provide the boundary. For your child to be a purposeful person, they need to learn discipline. They need to learn boundaries as well. So discipline is important. Yes, you know your child, but your ability to influence them and provide boundaries and discipline for them is also important. If not, you, will, you raise a child who lacks discipline. And if your child lacks discipline, they may not be all God has called them to be. Then we have the category of the final category that I like to call the power parents. And these are the parents who know their children and who can influence their children. And what does it mean to be a power parent? Because this is the goal for all of us. That every day we are walking our journey. No matter where you find yourself in, no matter the category you find yourself in. The thing is that you can start today to walk your way up to becoming a power parent. And a power parent means that you are connected to the source. To understand, God, what do you want me to do with this child? Who is the child that is in my living room right now? What have you put inside of them? How do I guide them? How do I navigate with them? They understand the child they've been given and what those children carry. Every child, every seed is a carrier of a solution. Please don't play with it. Don't joke with that. If God were to appear now and tell you that your child is the next WHO president, will you still talk to them the way that you talk to them today? Jesus was born a king, and they treated him as a king right from birth, even though he was born in a manger. But his parents recognized who he was, and they treated him as such, and they raised him as such. When you watch these movies, um, these epic movies, the kings, when, when an heir is born, they start the moment they are born to treat them to take over the throne. So you have to start now to treat your child and to train them to become who God is showing them that they will become. Power parents invest in knowing and building a grounded relationship with their children. And based on this relationship, they have learned to build the capacity to nurture, guide, influence their children to follow their unique purposes without force or without cohesion. So like I said, it doesn't matter where you are, you can walk your way up to becoming a power parent. And for some of us, we can find the map by ourselves, right? You can find a map if you pay attention, if you reflect, if you invest in understanding the child in front of you and let go of all the biases, let go of all the conditioning, let go of all the preconceived ideas of what parenting should be and focus on the child in front of you and their needs for time you can walk through. And for some of us, for some other people, we might need some help, right? And the, thing, the truth of the matter is, you know this idea that you don't need help to parents or you don't need to ask parenting questions or because you are a parent that you know it all. That idea is a cake. The odds are against us in this century. And you cannot be an analog parent parenting a digital native. There are a lot of things that your children know that you don't have idea. And if you find out that you're struggling, please don't be too proud. Don't be too shy to ask for help. Your child's destiny depends on it. 
And my sincere prayer is that we will not be those parents who will cause our children to miss their destiny or to make destiny errors that will rise up to the occasion and show up for these children, align them to purpose, and lead them to fulfill their destiny in Jesus' name. Wow. I'm sure we've all learned something this morning. Can we please put our hands together? We're going to celebrate the ministry of Dr. Vivian Okoye. God bless you.